Mechatronics, Mechatronics, Mechatronics. Hey everyone, it's Oliver. I've gotten tons of questions asking me about the best bachelors, the best master's programs in the USA, so today that's exactly what I'm gonna be telling you about. Before getting into the video, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for doing that. Now let's get into the video. First, let's talk about mechatronics, the field. Although it's not the most new engineering field out there, it is relatively new and colleges in the United States are still working on developing programs for mechatronics engineering. But this field is steadily growing and there is a lot of demand for it, clearly. And lots of jobs have been popping up everywhere with mechatronics in the title. As you might already know, mechatronics is a mix between software, mechanical, and electrical engineering with the main focus shifting depending on where you go to school. Some of the most common focuses are embedded systems design, automation, or robotics. All of these fields are somewhat different, but also somewhat similar. And if you want more information about mechatronics definitions or how it differs from other engineering types, then check out my playlist about mechatronics engineering. I've made lots of videos about the topic. One reason that mechatronics really appeals to a lot of people is because it has a lot of variety when it comes to job choice and career choice. At the end of the day, no matter where you end up working, the job you get is going to be a very focused subset of the things that you learned at school. For example, working in industrial automation, working with robots, doing lots of coding, or anything else that interests you. Before choosing a school in the US or any other country, it's important to make sure that it is accredited by the National Engineering engineering accreditation board in your particular country. Ensuring that your degree is recognized is extremely important if you ever want to work a job that requires you to be a professional engineer. This is a designation that you can get usually after working a certain number of years under another professional engineer and then taking an examination. A lot of the more classical manufacturing, mechanical, civil, or government jobs would require you to have this accreditation if you want to work for them. In the USA, this regulatory board is called the Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, or ABET. These are the people who decide which programs are good enough for you to end up taking the professional engineer examination after having worked in your field for a certain number of years, usually about four. So if you ever want to work outside of the tech field and you need your professional engineer designation, then it's a good idea to make sure that it's accredited. So now that we understand what ABET or ABET is, let's talk about some US schools that are ABET accredited for mechatronics engineering. As of right now, if you're just looking for a regular bachelor's of mechatronics, there are only three schools in the United States that provide this program. First up, we have Middle Tennessee State University, Kennesaw State University and California State University, Chico. I swear that's what it says, it's Chico. It can't not be Chico, it has to be Chico. Chico? Chico, what the fuck? <laughs> there are also other programs such as a bachelor in robotics or an engineering technology degree to work as a mechatronics technician. I'll provide a link down below in the description to the ABET search tool so that you can look it up for yourself. So as you can tell, your options of about three schools are pretty limited, but the good news is that there are tons of other countries that have agreements with ABET that will allow your particular program to transfer over to the United States if you wanted to. So what should you do if you still want to go to school in the United States, but you don't want to go to any of these schools and you still want to do mechatronics? Well, now you have to think about the job that you want. If you want to work for companies like Intel, AMD, or other computer hardware related companies, then you could take a look at doing an electrical or computer engineering degree. If you want to work in the more industrial automation side of things, you could do an automation engineering or mechanical engineering degree. If you want to work in robotics, you have to figure out exactly which part of the robotics field interests you. There are tons of different applications under the robotics hood, and mechatronics is just one of these things that works alongside robotics. Any field that has some software, circuits, and engineering design are great fields for working with robots. That being said, the absolute best thing that you can do in order to have a shot at working in a robotics job or any of these other jobs that interest you is to join a club or a team at your university that focuses particularly on the skills that you want to learn for the job that you want to work in. One way that you can find out which skills you might need for a particular job is to look at job postings. 
Take a look at the coding languages, the technical requirements, the preferred experience, and then shape your university education around these things. At the end of the day, the degree that you have in engineering doesn't matter so much, it's the skills and the knowledge that you can bring to the table. So my recommendation would be pick something that's relatively close to the engineering degree that you really want, and then build your skills on your own to get the job that you're looking for. So now let's go through each university and take a look at what their programs have to offer. First up, we have California State University Chico with the Bachelor of Science Mechatronics Engineering. I'm not going to go too in depth and cover every single item in this website, but I am going to show you the cost and the courses that you will take if you choose to go to one of these schools. So if you're interested and you're in state, then it will cost you about $7,800. But if you are a non-resident, it will also cost you $7,000 plus another $9,500. Your total costs for one year will be about $35,626. And the classes that you might take are in this flowchart right here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can see some basics, math, chemistry, mechanical engineering, manufacturing, some life sciences, more math, physics, the classical things that you would expect from an engineering. And here we have some embedded systems development, logic design, linear circuits. All of those things are very, very much a part of a mechatronics degree. And here is a more full and complete list of every single course that you'd be expected to take in this four-year program. All the links of everything that I show will be in the description, so be sure to take a look at it if you're interested. Second, we have Kennesaw State University and the Department of Robotics and Mechatronics Engineering. So here we have the undergraduate out-of-state costs, about $41,000. And if we go to this flowchart, apparently these schools really like flowcharts, we'll see that a lot of the courses are fairly similar. You have chemistry, you have math, you have some basic engineering graphics courses, physics, programming and problem solving, math, and then you get all the way to the bottom where you do mechatronic system design and robotics design. And lastly, we have Middle Tennessee State University, which has a mechatronics engineering bachelor's of science as well. And here we can see the academic map, which is like their printable roadmap. It's about the same number of credit hours as the other two. So here's the basic curriculum of the mechatronics engineering program. You got your freshman year, you got your sophomore year, you got your junior year, and you got your senior year. So that's about all you need to know. Check it out in the description. Cost of attendance, if you're out of state, the tuition is about $28,000. Your room and board is about $9,000. Books, and it adds up to between $43,000 and $45,000. So with the three schools out of the way, let's talk master's degrees. There are essentially zero masters of mechatronics engineering programs in the United States or Canada. That being said, there are lots of robotics, industrial automation, or more specialized programs than a mechatronics program. At this point in your education, if you're going into a master's engineering degree, you will probably be focusing the degree more towards this particular specialization or job that you're interested in. Based on these things, you can choose the master's program that best matches what you're looking for, and if mechatronics is what you're looking for, then choose something that's kind of close. If you're interested in more of the robotic side of things, you can take a look at the university of Pennsylvania, Oregon State University, Carnegie Mellon, and the University of Michigan, who all have masters in robotics. I've also found that a lot of mechatronics engineers want to do aerospace engineering, so if you're interested in seeing bachelors and masters of aerospace, check out this video that I made that goes into a lot of detail about aerospace engineering. And if you want to do any other field like industrial automation, more mechanical side of things, more software side of things, then choose the degrees that best suit that particular job. The options for mechatronics are quite limited in the bachelor's and master's realm, and like I said at the start, it's still an emerging field. But as I mentioned, the name of the degree is not the most important thing. It's the things that you learn while in university, regardless of whether that's inside or outside of the classroom. There is lots of opportunity in any engineering degree. You just have to go out there and shape it the way you want it in order to get the job that most appeals to you. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, be sure to leave a like. It helps out my channel a ton and subscribe for more content from me. I've been trying to change up some of the content a bit to be more finance focused. I'm personally very interested in investing investigating student loan debt, and how student loans can impact student choices made about school. I recently made a video about how the student debt problem came to be in my home country of Canada, so be sure to check that out if you're interested. I want to try and educate students about their financial decisions and how these choices will impact their futures and lives. With that being said, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you so much for sticking around to the very end, and I'll see you in the next one.